All right, everybody. Hello. I'm Chris Kent. Uh, there's all my stuff. And let's get going. All right, we're going to talk about list formatting. Surprise. All right, let's see if I can. There we go. So we've got our classic warrior horses side, of course. As you guys may or may not know, uh, horses, especially warrior horses, are highly collaborative, right? So they have things like Microsoft Teams where they can collaborate in. Now, in the past, they've hated it because they love list formatting so very much. But now there's some new exciting things, at least in targeted release. So if we go over to our uh, Warrior Horses team site, I'm just going to join on the web here so I don't mess up my presentation. And we come in here and we take a look at the stable, right? We've got a general tab. If we come over to our files tab, here we can start to see there's a slightly new view here. And you know you've got the new view if your open in SharePoint is not teal, uh, just as an FYI. So, uh, for instance, my standard release template, I've still got the teal and the formatting doesn't work there. But here, uh, we've got it in my targeted release tenant. So you can see I've added a nice column here called point horses. These are the people responsible for these documents. All right, so that's helpful. Be able to add additional columns and do some cool stuff. So let's add some formatting in here to make this even more valuable. Now, the first thing you'll notice is if I go into column settings, I don't have any option to format this column here within Teams. So that's where I got to use that open and SharePoint button. So I click that and we go to the lovely team site, similar list. Now I have noticed a couple of weirdness in the past few days. We've had several issues submitted on it. Um, there are some strange behavior, some of the list formatting. Um, I'm not really experiencing most of those here in my targeted release tenant, but I am seeing some strangeness like you can see right here. It's jammed all these, all these uh, names together without any formatting applied, whereas generally it looks like this. So there's a couple of strange things happening right now. Uh, it shouldn't affect the demo here, but if you're running into something, you can let me know, open an issue. Um, I don't work for Microsoft, so I can't do much, but I will uh, feel sad with you. How's that? Okay, so we come over here. And now the first thing we're going to do is just kind of show basic formatting. So if we format the current view, we're just going to take the, the one that kind of default suggests for us, alternate row styles, which adds that every other row is gray. And how do you go away? We'll move that over there. We'll save that. And now if we save that and we come back over here, we'll switch over to a post tab, we'll come back to our files tab. You'll see that is reflected here, right? So our view formatting is fully supported. That's nice. So what about column formatting? So I've got this uh, you know, multi-person uh, field here. So I'm gonna go over here to our SPDev list formatting repo. So this is over in GitHub. Again, we've got uh, nearly 70 samples in here of how to do different column samples and view samples. And it's a great starting off point, uh, but I highly suggest you go over here. And all you got to do to navigate is go down here to column samples. And then I'm going to look for the field type I've got, multi-person, ah, face pile. Uh, this is one we've shown off before, but I like it because it, uh, it's going to show a couple things and a couple differences in teams. So right here in GitHub, I'm just going to grab all of that. Right click, I'm going to copy that. And I'm going to go back and I'm going to go over here to my column, column settings, format this column. And in this nice window here, I'm just going to paste what I got from GitHub, and I'm going to hit save on that. All right, so let's get rid of that. So you see, now we've got a nice format. It really shows off for multi-people fields, right? You can hover over it and see their names, right? You can see the additional people. That kind of, stuff. kind of cleans that up. looks really nice. And we'll come over here, and again, we'll come back to the tab. We can see now our column format is showing up, which is great. Uh, you also notice the strange thing is that the sort is always applied here, even though it's not a part of the view. Weird, strange, but fun. Okay, now a couple of things to note with this. Um, so if we take a look here, um, so we see that showing up at Teams, which is awesome. Um, here on the web, it also show up in the main client, no problem. But if we take a look at something like the mobile, maybe later, all right, so we take a look at our, our mobile devices here, we go over to General, and we switch over to our Files tab you'll see that we don't get that same kind of experience. So just be aware that the list format and the view formatting is currently, at least I, I haven't heard otherwise, but currently is not supported in the Teams mobile app. I'm showing the iOS, but the Android is the same. Uh, another thing to note um, is that if we add a new tab, right, where generally you wouldn't do this particular scenario, but if you had a document library, right, we're gonna just use the, uh, the stable, and we're just gonna grab that same one with the files tab, all right, we're going to go over here. That's fine. You'll notice that when we add that, we get that kind of class experience. This is what I mean by the open and SharePoint's teal. We don't get any of those pieces there. This is kind of that specialized Teams view. 
All right, so when you come in here, we don't even see our additional column. So just something to be aware of. Um, there are still some limitations here, but it is coming soon. And we don't want that junk. Bye. So we come back here to our files tab. A couple of things to note. So we've got the, the format. It's working. It's great. Um, I've chosen this format, though, specifically because it demonstrates a couple of differences between Microsoft Teams view um, and with your modern list view. And just a couple of things you have to be aware of in your format. So if we format this right here, again, we're going to ignore some of this. But if we come down here, I've added this vertical align baseline to the image. Now, if I delete that here and we save that, you'll notice it changes zero things here in just a moment. Do, do, do. Save them. It's a very complex format, apparently. Is that a second here? Uh, but while that's doing that, what's going to happen is you'll notice that nothing happens here. But in Teams, you'll notice a slight shift because of how that's working. Yeah, maybe that's what's going on. Oh, man. Let's just go ahead and try and refresh that while that's saving. Maybe it's saved. We'll see if we got it applied. So, we see, yeah, we can already see the difference here. You'll notice the rounding is different. So, there's some definite CSS kind of defaults uh, that are different. In this case, the um, image element type has a... A vertical line set to middle in Teams by default, whereas in uh, SharePoint Online, it appears to be set to baseline. So again, not something you generally have to worry about, but the idea here is test your formats in both if you intend to apply them in both. Um, the other one here uh, would be the at current web. So that's something we've used before where we're pulling these images, right? So here you can see we're pulling them from the layouts, user photo. And if we were to create that you know, the current web will put the absolute web URL on there. But if we took that away, all right, we just had to do a relative link. All right, we'll save that here. You know, so it works just fine in SharePoint because it's just going to grab that first part of our sites and everything's good. But again, if we come back here and we refresh our files tab, now we are sad, very, very sad. So just keep that in mind as you're working the teams to make sure you're doing things like absolute links with the at current web and then just testing things to see that there are some very, very minor CSS differences. Uh, there's also uh, varying levels of support for the uh, UI fabric themes here. So for our theme colors and other stuff, you'll, you'll tend to see those show up as purple rather than your theme colors. Um, and it's kind of ignoring some of that. All right, so that's cool. That's great format show, but let's do something a little more team specific here. So I've got another sample here. If we go back right into the little our face pile, we have a multi-person Teams chat link. So we're going to grab this format. Let's take a look at what it does. Now, it's actually a fairly simple format. Let's copy it, apply it, and we can take a look at what it does. Paste that sucker. Save that. So what it's really doing is, if we take a look, it's just a link, and it's got an icon here, right? And then it's got text that says, ask a question. The key here is in the href for the link, right? So it's building this deep link into Teams chat by combining our fields here. So it's joining all the current fields email and building that in. And then it's also bringing the topic name is the file refresh. So that's the name of the file. And then it's automatically sending a message. So what does that really look like, right? So if we take a look, if we click on, say, dinosaur coloring book, we can click that. We're going to say, we'll just join on the web again. Close our other one just for fun. For that second, what we did was we automatically started a chat, right? With the four people we said were responsible for that particular document. We gave the title of the chat when it's three or more people up here. So dinosaur coloring book. And we gave a starter message of nay, right? So that's pretty awesome. So the idea that you can deep link into chat and integrate that directly with your list is really, really powerful. Now there's a bunch of other stuff you can do there. So this is deep linking to a chat that you can deep link to tabs, even your custom tabs. You can deep link to the scheduling dialog and so on. So there's quite a bit you can do there and it's very, very cool. Uh, one caution with that um, is that the deep linking when you're already inside Teams, right? So if I go over to file, um, it's slightly strange because Teams expects the deep link to come through JavaScript. And so if you really want that truly integrated experience where it's not gonna ask you um, to do this, uh, you'll need to use something like a field customizer, but that's probably a little overkill. This is pretty easy to go for and create those chats. Okay. All right. So awesome stuff. Again, that's a sample that's already available. Check it out. Quick recap. So file tab supports the formatting. Document library tab doesn't. Mobile's sad for now. Uh, but really take advantage of those deep links. 
and really apply those formats. So you can bring that same awesome things you've been doing directly into your files tab. Um, you know, adding a list tab to Teams and then providing those formats is a great way to make a very simple application right there in your kind of your main pane of glass that people are using all day long. I mean, it's a great way to really simplify things and emphasize what they should be doing right there. So formatting saves the day again. So check it out here. Uh, you can go to check out the full documentation. All this documentation applies to Teams um, as well as the modern list view. And then you can see the two samples there. And if you want to read more about Teams deep links, that link is there as well. All right, that's all I got. Thanks, everybody. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, Chris. Awesome, awesome, awesome.